Can you see that? Uh, yeah. So I won't be able to see people arriving now, I don't think. No, I can let people in. Um, I've started the recording now. OK. I'll just wait a couple of minutes just in case. Yeah. Hello to everyone who's joined us. We're just going to wait a couple more minutes and um, see if anybody else ends up joining. OK, I think I'll make a start now because um, we don't want to keep people hanging on, do we? So hello, everybody. Um, my name is Julia Locke. I'm the careers advisor at the Henley College. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, so I'm hoping that this will be a very useful session for you. Obviously, our, our first year students have had a difficult year and um, universities aren't working in the usual way with lots of open days and so on and opportunities to visit. Um, but they have really risen to the challenge universities and are offering so much virtual um, information and webinars and opportunities that in some ways it's almost better for the students. But um, I appreciate it's it's tough for them this year. So we want to get them started to think about university or not. Um, so we have Petia from Bath University here this evening who's going to give us a talk um, thinking about potentially the pros and cons, why university might be a good idea and then taking us through the process of um, deciding and um, applying. Um, I'm going to give just a couple of slides at the beginning now to explain the process at Henley College, just to sort of set the scene. And then we are hoping to have two alumni join us um, to talk about their experiences of um, applying and being at university. But I just wanted to say at the, the bottom line here that there is a lot of support available to students. So. Um, they all have a, their own tutor who um, can be very helpful in discussing this and helping with applications. And I also see a lot of students um, to support them as well. So they're very welcome to come and see me. And there is a lot of information on our internal Careers Hub team um, to try and help students know which of the million of websites available they might go to first. So, but this evening we're going to be talking about applications to university, mostly in the UK. So um, the process at Henley College um, will be explained in a, in a Henley College guide, which will be published at the beginning of May. It can't be done before the beginning of May, unfortunately, because that's when UCAS opens up for the 2022 applications. And I need to be able to see there's a new application form this year. So I can't produce the guide until I've seen the new application form. So um, that will be a little delayed in May. So we're now in year 12, um, running up to Easter and then the last term and the summer break. So activities the students should be busy with really is starting their research and that gives them plenty of time then to um, do it carefully and slowly and without panicking. So there are um, many, many resources that they could use. Um, we have Unifrog, which is also available to parents. So that's a really good first port of call. The UCAS website is vast and very informative, um, but I've also put the Prospects website and University, their own websites are very, very informative as well. Potentially students can also be booking onto Open Days, which at the moment is still virtual, but we're hoping that um, at some point they will offer real open days and similarly for taster days and summer schools. So these are opportunities to actually um, sort of taste a little bit of the subject area that they're interested in and, and find out more about it. And they can also be thinking about super curricular learning. So that's an extra research and learning on the subject of interest over and above their A-levels or their BTEC and also thinking about some work experience. So for those of you that have read the careers newsletter that I sent through to you, there are umpteen opportunities at the minute for virtual work experience. So there's plenty for them to do. Then when they come back in the autumn term, they should really have done a good amount of research over the summer. There may be some open days they can go to in September, um, but they sh ideally it would be great if students had um, 
had a really good think about universities and courses that they're interested in. And then we ask um, them to fill in the UCAS application form, um, speak to their tutor about this, and also the, speak to the tutor about the reference which the tutor will bring together for them, um, especially if there are any extenuating circumstances, so um, problems and issues that the student may have had to contend with that should be put into the reference to support that student's application. Um, and then they submit the form to Henley College. We add the reference and then it's sent to UCAS. Oh, sorry. After submission, um, then hopefully they'll get lots of offers. Some of these come through really quickly. Potentially they might get a few rejections or offers for interview. Um, then they make their decisions whether um, they've got offers to reject and they get left with two, one of which they make their firm or first choice and one of which they make their second or insurance choice. Student finance doesn't need to be worried about until February of next year, and accommodation doesn't need to be worried about until potentially after that date as well. So that's the sort of timeline of activities that students could get involved with. The actual dates that you need to know about, for those students who are applying to Oxford or Cambridge or for medicine, veterinary or dentistry, they have an earlier deadline. Um, the UCAS deadline for applications is the 15th of um, October. So we ask that those students complete their applications by the beginning of October so that we've got time to check them, add the reference and send them off to UCAS. The vast majority of courses for UK universities, um, we ask for them to be completed by the beginning of November of this year and submitted to college. And then we guarantee that those applications will go off to UCAS in, in very good time before the 15th of January, which is the UCAS deadline. Having said that, we do always get some late applications, so we're still having a few applications now for 2022 starts. So nothing is impossible, but in an ideal world, all students will have submitted by the beginning of November. <laughs> um, those musical and creatives amongst the students, if they're applying to conservatoires, which are a special select little group, the music ones have a very early deadline of the 1st of October um, and the dance have a 15th of January. Um, that's a slightly different application. And lastly, non-UK universities um, have a huge variety of deadlines and processes involved. So potentially students can look on Unifrog to start their research, but then could come and see me to talk about that in more detail. So we'll have um, questions, if that's all right, at the end of Petia's um, presentation, but I will take my sharing off now and take you back to Petia's presentation. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Okay, right, so everyone should be able to see my screen now? Yep. Wonderful, okay. Um, so thank you very much um, for talking us through the process um, through Henley College. Um, so yeah, I'm here today from the University of Bath in the lovely, beautiful Southwest um, to talk to you all about choosing a course um, and a university and then applying to university as well. Um, but first off, I am going to start with talking about the benefits of going to university and why um, and why people attend. Um, so yes, so my name is Petia. I come. F I'm actually from Reading um, originally, interestingly enough. Um, but yeah, I'm the undergraduate student recruitment assistant here at the university. Um, so it's my job to um, attend fairs, go to talks at schools, um, interact with parents, um, students, teachers, etc. All about um, the world of higher education um, and talk about talk about university and especially about us here at Bath. I'm also a University of Bath graduate. I studied sociology here and I graduated last year. So I've had the student experience up until quite recently and I can sort of remember what it was like. Well, I can very much remember what it was like making all these decisions and having all these options in front of me. And so hopefully I'll be able to help you navigate um, this kind of decision uh, that's coming up. 
So your choice then. Um, so in the UK, we have 320 plus universities and colleges, so that's already a lot to choose from. But then um, if you think about the wider situation, you've then got 35,000, over 35,000 courses to choose from. And these include bachelor's degrees, undergraduate masters. So that's where you do your bachelor's and then your master's um, kind of plumped into one um, into one course foundation degrees and degree apprenticeships as well. It's important to note that obviously these will be offered at different types of institutions. So for example, um, at some institutions, you'll find a bachelor's and undergraduate master's and a foundation degree, but you won't find a degree apprenticeship. At other institutions, you might find a different mix. Um, us here at Bath, we do the bachelor's and the undergraduate master's, but not the foundation um, for most of our courses. So. Obviously, this is a huge amount to choose from um, and I'll try and navigate you through, um, you know, kind of helping make that choice. So we're going to start off with why go to university? What are the benefits um, and why do people do it? So first off, we might be thinking about your passions and your future. So it's an opportunity to continue studying something you're interested in or learn something completely new. Um, this was the case when I was applying to university. Um, I studied maths, Spanish, history at A-level um, and I also did an EPQ and an AS in physical education. And so it was quite a mix there. It doesn't necessarily point you to a particular degree um, and I enjoyed most of you know I enjoyed most of my subjects but I didn't really want to continue them to a degree level and so um, I just needed to research and find what I was really really interested in really really passionate about for me that was sociology society people social movements etc and so it was an opportunity for me to learn something completely new because sociology wasn't offered at my school um, for A level Alternatively, you could just be really interested in, let's say, um, mathematics or physics, and you want to take that on further to a degree level um, and learn more, be, you know, um, be immersed in this academic world where you have the latest research kind of feeding, feeding in back to your learning, etc. And university is a great way to do this. It's also an opportunity to gain experience. Um, so at Bath, we have a really, really large placement scheme, for example, um, and our placements um, advisors are really supportive and they provide a great environment for students to be able to secure a placement. Um, and a placement is offered on all of our courses, a placement year is offered, um, sometimes compulsory, sometimes uh, optional. For most courses, it is completely optional. Um, and you can see on the left hand side here, we also have a placements fair each year um, where all of our students who have just gotten off of placement go and show what they did for the year. And so in that case, you can go and learn, get some experience in the field that you're interested in, um, learn what you do and don't like, what you do and don't want to do in the future and make some connections for the future as well. So possibly that might be offered on the courses that you're looking to apply to, at the universities you're looking to apply to. Um, and so keep an eye out if that's something that you're interested in. Some careers might require a specific degree. So for example, you want to be a doctor, you need medicine, um, a vet, you need veterinary science, um, a lawyer, law. Um, however, a lot of um, careers don't. Um, and so this is also something to consider. So for example, the career I'm in right now, you don't really need a specific type of degree. Um, you just need to have kind of relevant experience in the area and to have, um, you know, kind of a good viewpoint on higher education um, as a whole. And so for me, um, my degree, uh, the way I saw it was a way to continue my learning and continue um, in academia to learn something I was interested in, but also to gain a lot of transferable skills um, and to kind of open up more of a world um, of opportunity to me, because a lot of jobs nowadays do require you to be educated to a degree level. Um, some don't, but a lot do. And so I saw that as a way to just kind of expand my horizons you know, develop my skills, learn something new, and um, and it really helped me in that way. 
And then you also have um, in the way of developing academic skills. So um, when you come to university, you develop so much. And this was related to what I just said about transferable skills. So there's research and analysis, critical thinking, communication, problem solving, etc. These all come with kind of your academic life. Um, and over the course of your degree, you'll develop each and every one of the important skills needed um, to succeed after in life afterwards um, academically. So it's a wonderful way to just kind of settle down into something you're interested in um, and, you know, develop your skills that way too. Aside from that, um, the main other things I would mention are to do with the university experience. So alongside developing your academic skills, you also develop life skills. So things like budgeting, time management, responsibility and independence. I would say for me, university was a wonderful stepping stone to adult life um, because I didn't really have anybody, I mean, I, I moved out of my family home um, and so now I had to manage myself, but I was still tethered to an institution um, and I still had responsibilities there, I still had structure. Um, but I also did, um, I also had them helping me and supporting me in any way I needed to. So if I needed help with budgeting, um, managing stress, responsibility, et cetera, all the things that come with being an adult, um, I found I had that support there. So it's a wonderful way to just kind of gain independence on your way to adult life. Aside from this, you also gain um, kind of the opportunity to uh, kind of meet new people, learn new things and get involved. Um, at university there is quite a, a lot to get involved with, particularly in the way of clubs and societies, skills development um, sessions, getting involved with the SU. Um, and so really it's kind of the time to meet your people, meet the people you have something in common with, um, friends for life possibly, um, and uh, you know just kind of expand your circle um, and furthermore, it's also a chance to experience somewhere new and meet people from around the world. Um, so I personally, in my first year flat, I met people from all kind of corners of the world. Um, my roommate was from Hong Kong. And so it was a wonderful opportunity to just kind of learn more about other cultures um, and other areas and parts of the world I have not considered in too much detail before. Um, and it's been really wonderful for me. It really just kind of helps enhance, um, enhance your experience. Um, and it means that perhaps people who have not really experienced too many other cultures, you get the opportunity to at university, which is really great. So moving on to the next section, what should I study? Obviously, I outlined that there is a choice out there to be made um, and there is quite a lot to choose from. So we're going to move on to choosing a course. So this is obviously operating under the assumption that you have chosen to go to university. Now we are choosing a course. So where do you start? You might want to consider your favourite subject at school or college. As I mentioned earlier, you might want to just continue on with doing history and do a history degree. Um, or you might want to choose your most successful subject. So if you're particularly strong in, let's say, math and physics, you might want to go into engineering um, because that's where you know that you are strong. Alternatively, you could go into what interests you most. So that's like in my case, um, where it's what interests me most was you know, society and sociological kind of theories. Um, Alternatively, you could also be looking at plans after university. As I mentioned earlier, um, you could be looking at a career perhaps in the finance industry um, or as an accountant. So you go into accounting and finance um, and that can really help you in your future. So these are all the things that you could consider when picking a course. Now, you could, if you are picking after one of your A-levels, perhaps you could study perhaps a more traditional subject like, his like history or chemistry or French. Um, or you could choose something perhaps a bit new or something interdisciplinary. So American studies is one of the ones I see cropping up a bit more now, um, as well as natural sciences, which is a bit of more of a mix between all of the sciences. Um, mechanical engineering also marries a lot of the, the different components of separate STEM areas. Um, or international management and modern languages, which is something we offer at Bath. Um, which as it said, as you can see, it's interdisciplinary. So it sits within both management and our languages department. So it gives you kind of the best of both worlds there. Alternatively, you might want to consider a vocational course. 
So for example, if you want to be really hands on, you could do heritage studies, wildlife management, medicine obviously is a very vocational one, um, or even translation work. So there's a lot out there um, and, you know, there might be things you've never even heard of before, um, such as the wildlife management. I'd never heard of that one before um, doing one of these presentations. And so um, really it's a case of looking on the UCAS website and searching up maybe perhaps some things you're interested in, see if they exist um, or if there's a course that exists similar to that um, and looking more into it. Uh, when it comes to researching kind of um, how available these courses are, this can impact upon your decision. Um, so when it comes to medicine, this is only offered at 36 institutions. American studies is only offered at 23, so it's much more of a niche subject than perhaps business studies, which is offered at 161 and geography, which is offered at 84. So when you're thinking of choosing a course, immediately sometimes your choice will very much narrow down the institutions that you can look at that offer that course. Um, so that's something to consider. Um, oh, there we are. Another thing you might want to consider is the employment prospects um, after graduating. And so just to give an example from Bath, we've got mechanical engineering, 95%. Biochem, 90%, modern languages, 80%, and accounting and finance was 95%. So for some people, this is a very important thing that they look at when they're choosing a course, um, kind of looking at how employable am I afterwards? You know, what are my future prospects? And that's completely understandable. Um, we just want to make sure that we can support you in every way as a higher education institution. Um, and, you know, when you make that choice, just kind of be thinking about that if it's the right choice for you. So we've picked a course, that's wonderful. Now we need to pick a university. And so we've suggested kind of the following criteria. Um, obviously you will prioritise some of these more than others and this will depend hugely on who you are as a person and what, um, what's important to you. Um, but these are some of the ones that we have suggested. You could even add further further onto this list as well, depending on what's important to you. But we go through each of them. So um, is the university closer to home or is it further away? So if you choose to live at home um, while you're at university and stay at home and attend a local institution, um, then this does come with many benefits. You've got something within your comfort zone, family support, cooking and cleaning could possibly be done for you or a reduced amount than you would if you were away. And it could even incur cheaper living costs. Um, alternatively, you could choose to live away. Um, and that means living in kind of university accommodation or living close to the university that you're attending. So this could increase your job prospects depending on where the university is, etc. Um, because you have access to part time jobs close by. Um, you could be employed by the university even like I was when I was an undergraduate. Um, it gives you the student experience. So you're living away from home with other students um, and you get to meet, uh, as I mentioned earlier, meet people from all over and have that student -y life of managing yourself and developing your skills. Um, and you also get the independence and freedom as well. Um, some people are desperate for that when they're done with A-levels, some people not so much. So it's entirely up to you. Next thing to mention is, is it a campus or a city university? So pictured here is our University of Bath campus. As you can see, we have quite a lot on there. You can see our sports facilities on the bottom left. Um, a lot of our accommodation is found on the bottom right hand side there. And then in the middle, you find a lot of our university and academic facilities. So a campus university really just means that most of your facilities are found in one place, in one campus. Um, and you can see the city down there um, in the top of the picture. So we are separate, you know, we're just up a bit of a hill from the city. So just outside the city centre. Um, and it means that most of our students would be operating in this kind of area when they're studying on campus. They, they can find a lot of what they need. Um, it's student oriented. So we have things specifically for students, such as the sporting facilities, the um, GP and dentist on site, the supermarket, the cafes, restaurants and bars. It's student oriented and it has a nice studenty vibe to it. 
it's also safe um, because we have campus security that can make sure that everything's safe and in proper order um, and it just kind of helps give that kind of that feeling of being in the student area protected um, and um, having everything kind of designed towards the student lifestyle. Alternatively, you might want to consider a city university. So a city university can grant a few benefits. So for one, you are immersed in city life. You're right in the middle of it. Um, so for example, for a city uni, um, thinking about a lot of the London universities, for example, you would be smack bang in the middle of the city. Um, you'd have you know, amenities and services close by to you. So where on a campus you might not have something you really want in the city, it probably wouldn't be too hard to find or too far away. Um, and this can give you a lot of independence and freedom as well. Um, if you don't want to be living in campus accommodation or on campus, you want to just go and live out, you know, somewhere in the city and not be, um, you know, and just have that further independence, then that's a possibility too. And you could also have more access to part time jobs, um, given that you're just so close to so many of the possible employers. Um, so that's something to consider. Um, it is kind of you do find that some are kind of a city campus blend, um, but most universities do fall within the city city campus um, binary there. Now, league tables are also something that um, definitely we could we would recommend you consider. Um, it depends on you how much sort of value you want to put in a league table ranking but it's good to have a look anyway so league tables are independent sources of information you have the three biggest ones are the complete university guide the guardian and the time student one um, and so you can look at them both by universities as a whole so you can see universities um, nationally and how they rank nationally um, or you could look at them by departments so let's say you're interested in, stu in studying geography you would pick geography as um, as the subject area and then you would see how different universities rank in that particular subject so it's important to note that the best university in the country won't necessarily be the best provider for the course that you're looking to study so definitely would recommend having a look at that so they assess different things such as quality of teaching and learning access to facilities etc so you can see what's important to you and how they how they match up Student satisfaction is also very important to a lot of people. Um, so this is an independent and honest insight into what it's like to be a student at a particular institution. Um, we're kind of, I think we're due a good, um, a, a good, you know, kind of renewal of this survey. We need more data, but the latest is from 2018 and 2019, um, which is the Student Experience Survey and the NSS survey. Um, and so these include questions on academic support, um, teaching and resources, and just make sure that you have an independent source to go to on what it's like to be a student at that university, because um, just a good way to kind of get a feel for what it's like to be there. Next up is, do you want to consider a placement or a study abroad? As I mentioned earlier, we have a huge placements program here at the University of Bath, and we're second in the UK for the number of students taking placement because we do see the value in it. Um, and we do see the value in our students gaining real world experience in large companies like Intel or L'Oreal, or even this kind of on the smaller end or in the public sector or in the government sector. So if you're interested in something like this, do, does your institution offer placements or study abroad? How long do they last? Are they six months, three months, whole year? Um, and what links do they have with the industry? And um, how kind of how well do they support students in being able to secure a placement? Um, and while they're on placement, are they still supported by the university, etc.? So if that's something that you want to consider, definitely look into it. Next up is the university facilities. Um, these will differ again as to how important they are to you. Um, do they have any 24 seven facilities? So like a bath, we have the 24 seven access to the library. Are there any extra costs incurred with accessing any further facilities? Is there any specialist equipment? Um, you might need it for your course and you might think that, OK, well, at one university they don't have this particular machine, but at this university they do and I'll have access to it. It's wonderful and that might help make your decision. 
Um, do they have good sporting facilities? So like at Bath, we have the Sports Training Village. Um, and I would also, when I would also insert here, when I was kind of researching which universities I wanted to go to and making my decisions on firm and insurance choices, one of the things was the sporting facilities for me um, and how much it costs to use them as a student. Um, and that was something that was important. And then finally, we've got student services and support. So, um, for example, us, us here at Bath, we do have the student services team, a wonderful way to access support for disability advice, financial support, mental health and well-being. And we have drop-in sessions as well as um, book sessions as well. And so, obviously, the kind of support that you'll see at between university to university will probably be quite similar, um, but it's it's good to research and to see what's out there um, at the universities that you're researching, at the universities that you're interested in, um, just so then you're aware and you know if you need any particular support or any um, extra uh, needs to be accounted for, um, then you know that the university can take care of that. And then finally, we've got accommodation. So is it private or university owned? Uh, this could affect the price. It could affect um, kind of any insurance or any kind of utilities that might be included or not included in the rent. Do you want to share bathroom or ensuite? Um, what kind of price range or kind of location? Um, these are all very individual aspects of it. And so again, it's important to um, think about what's most important to you. And then is the accommodation guaranteed? What are the criteria of this guarantee? So then we're moving on to the final section of this application of this presentation, which is making your application. So um, as was mentioned before, um, Henley College works with its own internal deadlines, so always stick to these. Um, as was mentioned, the uh, UCAS deadline for most courses is the 15th of January, with uh, select courses being on the 15th of October, but it's important to keep up with your internal um, your internal deadlines just to make sure that everything can get out on time um, to, to UCAS and then they can send it out to the correct universities. So when we receive your application, then how do we make a decision as a, as a higher education institution? The first section we will look at is your personal details and any cho and your chosen courses that you've chosen to apply to. Um, so you could even put, if you have any mitigating circumstances in there to put in, we'll also be able to see those. Um, so it's important to mention at this point, when you first make your application, we won't be able to see which other universities um, you've applied to. We'll only be able to see the courses you've applied to to study at, at our university. Section two is your qualifications, including obtained grades and predicted grades. Um, so that just helps us make a decision on whether you're academically capable of taking on this course. Um, section three is your personal statement. I'll talk um, in a lot more detail about that in a second. Um, and then finally, we've got your reference. So that's what your school will attach to your UCAS um, application to support um, other things you put in your application and um, to big you up really to universities. So your personal statement then, what is it? Um, so it's 4,000 characters or 47 lines of text. Um, and it's your opportunity to speak directly to a member of um, university staff and let them know why you're interested in this course and why you are the right person for this course. So as you can tell, it is an important part of the application because it is your only opportunity to, in, in many cases, to speak to a member of staff and let them know your motivations and why you're the right person for it. And you then put your um, personal experiences, um, your, your work experience, other experience, academic um, research and other things like that and you make that relevant to your motivations on studying this course. It could be used as the basis for an interview. Um, so for a lot of courses at a lot of universities, um, they don't require an interview. Um, however, I know that certain institutions, so for example, Oxford and Cambridge, they interview on all of their applicants that they've shortlisted for that. Um, or for certain courses, let's say, for example, social work, we interview here at Bath for it. Um, at some points you do interview and so it's important that your personal statement then is accurate and reflects your motivations and the evidence that you've put in there is correct um, because it will most likely you will most likely be questioned on it during the interview um, however 
You can also provide evidence of work experience and additional activities that you wouldn't be able to put in any other part of your UCAS application. So if you remember here, um, we've got your qualifications, including grades obtained and predicted grades. If let's say you had a grade seven in piano, that wouldn't really fit in that section. Or if you were um, a tutor, it wouldn't really be put in any other section other than your personal statement. So it's your opportunity to give evidence of things you've done outside of school, um, your achievements, et cetera, um, and make sure that they're accounted for in your application. It's also important for near miss applications. So a near miss application is when a student applies to us and they don't quite have, they don't quite meet the um, the entry requirements for a typical offer from us for that course. But we've then read their personal statement and it's really strong. Um, and so we're then able to still give them offer um, despite them not meeting the academic or other requirements for the course. So. I've just drilled into you how important the personal statement is um, and it can be very daunting when you first start thinking about it. Um, but a good, really good way to think about it actually is to imagine you're being interviewed and the interviewer is asking you the question, why do you want to study this subject and what makes you the right person for the course? As long as every sentence um, in your personal statement is aimed towards answering at least one section of this question, you should be good to go. Um, you, you're definitely on the right track. Um, and so just make sure that everything you put in there is um, geared towards answering this question. So we've got some personal statement top tips um, at kind of close to the end here. Um, I would maybe combine three of my favourites um, to form one big um, tip. So I would say um, read it out loud to family and friends, think carefully about your spelling, grammar and vocabulary and draft and redraft until you're completely happy with it. I would morph those into three big, into like one big tip. Um, and that just kind of means that if you've drafted and redrafted, if you've had other people check over it, and if you've thought about your spelling, grammar and vocabulary um, throughout the personal statement, it just means that what you produce at the end is a nice polished piece of work um, that's had things considered like spelling, grammar and punctuation. And it makes sense to not only you, but also to other people who read it who might not know anything about the subject area. Or, and that means that that's great. It, you know, it's legible by everyone um, and it's a nice polished piece of work to put forward. Um, and in the a nice polished piece of writing to show your motivations and why you're the right person for the course. We also have other tips here, um, like don't just list achievements and skills. Um, I'm sure Henley College will give you loads of resources and support with writing your personal statement. Um, but one of the big things is not just listing things that you've done um, and making sure to incorporate, you know, what you've picked up from things that you've done or read or any work experience you've had. Um, you know, the skills that you've gotten from that and how that makes you prepared for university and prepared for this course. Um, also, don't be tempted to plagiarise. Um, that's just, it, you know, your personal statement should be about you. Um, it should be about what you've done and your motivations. And um, and so, yeah, it's just not it's not wise to plagiarise and it's, it's just not fair to to yourself. Um, and finally, I would just say do use an appropriate email address. No UCAS application will be thrown out because you use an email address you made like 10 years ago. Um, but it's just kind of a good way to make sure that you're just putting your best foot forward with your application. So finally, we're going to end on the note of how can I stand out? Um, given how competitive um, the kind of applying to universities is, especially nowadays, um, how can I make sure that I stand out and I make my personal statement and my application strong? These are things I'd recommend including in your personal statement. Um, kind of the main thing we want to we want to encourage here is going outside of your academic curriculum. Um, so going outside of your A levels, whatever you're learning currently, and researching further into the subject that you're applying to. Um, so let's say, for example, you're interested in economics or business, you'd be reading The Economist, keeping up with the news in whatever field you're, you're interested in. Um, there might be a there might be an online journal or um, maybe some further reading to do in a book to do with something you're interested in. 
I'd also heavily recommend um, MOOCs, which are massive online open courses um, and oh, massive open online courses. I always get those mixed up. And these are the ways that you can um, kind of get an introduction um, into something you're interested in, um, preferably linked to the course, of course. Um, and you, I think they typically take maybe six to ten weeks maybe some are even shorter actually and they might take a few hours of your week to to do um, but it's a good way to show motivation it's a good thing to reflect on in your personal statement what you've learned and what your um, how that has kind of developed your interest in the subject further um, and these are things that especially at academically leaning universities we do like to see um, and we do like to see that you've gone above and beyond to research and um, and to kind of reflect on your experience with with these so absolutely we also do also encourage um, things like radio programs ted talks um, i know that a lot of universities put some free online lectures um, on their youtube pages or their vimeo pages so have a look out for those as well um, and yeah they could be really really great to include in your personal statement OK, so um, that's the end of my presentation. Then we'll head to the, the alumni and the Q&A section now. Um, the final thing I'll say is the QR code I have up on the screen right now. Um, this is in case you want to hear from us here at Bath. Um, we have updates on like our open days and other events and things like that. If you want to sign up um, and make sure that you're, you've got the most up to date information from us here at Bath, then scan the QR code and fill out the short form. Um, and you'll be on our mailing list. So yeah, um, thank you everybody for listening. And if you have any questions at all, be happy to answer them in the Q&A portion. Great, thank you, Petty. That's really interesting, lovely. And I like the duck. Um, <laughs> so Hannah has joined us. Um, so Hannah, I don't know if you would like to put your camera on and your microphone and have a chat with us. Are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Have you got oh, your wonderful. Have you got your camera um on as oh, well? Not working at the minute, so I'm sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> okay. So, would you like a few moments to to say a little bit first before we go to the Q and A? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, for everyone attending here, my name's Hannah. Um, I'm an, I'm an alumni from Henley College. Um, I graduated from the University of the West of England um, this year, just gone, so 2020. Um, I studied in business. Um, at, so I, at Henley College, I did business as a BTEC with an A-level language on the side. Um, and at university, I studied um, business and management course. Um, I did a four-year course with my um, third year being on placement year, where I worked at Intel um, Corporation based in Swindon. Um, and now I'm graduated and working full time. <laughs> Brilliant. And how did you do you remember how you found the UCAS application process? Did it feel tricky or did you do you find it all right? Uh, so from my personal experience, my history with school, it was very much um, everyone goes to one school and it's a natural stepping stone. Um, so attending Henley College was the first time I'd done a sort of different application process. And then again with UCAS to university, that was the first time I'd done um, a major application where you really had to sell yourself. So for me, it was a very daunting experience. Um, there's a lot that you kind of have to cover and talk about. And as was mentioned earlier, you've got the personal statement that inquires a lot of information um, about your own personal self. Um, but, you know, looking back on it now, it, it wasn't as scary as it was you're putting yourself out there and we're expecting people to uh, know who you are just from a bit of paper which can be a bit difficult but I really shouldn't have worried to be honest looking back um, if there's one thing that I wish I could have learned it was that the personal statement is really the way to go I think I was so focused on my grades especially when looking back at GCSE um, I got a lot of A stars to C grade and I think I had one D and it was in French or something that I was absolutely terrible at um, so the general UCAS application, I was very worried about the grades and stuff, but the personal statement's your chance to really um, personalise it to you and your experience. So for me, I'm very interested in business. Um, I did really well in all my business classes and anything that related to that is where I really put the weight in. Um, and, it, and if you can balance out, you know, if you've got some grades that you're a bit worried about or concerned might not help your application, your personal statement's a chance to kind of help the positive side shine through and you know I did well in business so that's what I focused on and yeah helped me get into the course I wanted. 
Great. And is there anything else? So really, it's the highlighting the personal statement and your interest sort of over and above what you actually have to study for your course, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, is there anything about your choice of university or course that looking back on you think you could have done a little bit differently or or how did you do that well? You know, were you pleased with your research? Yeah, so I mean, it, it might be a little bit different now with the pandemic, but for every university that I was really interested in, I made sure I went to an open day. Um, I know they're probably all virtual now, which makes it a little bit difficult. But um, the way I found that UE was the place I wanted to be was just being on campus and just the the actual vibe of it and getting to meet the people and, uh, you know, people that might be in your course that year or even the faculty um it's kind of was a big deciding factor for me there were other places I enjoyed but when I really thought about it I didn't quite click as well with um yeah. I I applied, sorry Karen no I was gonna say I just applied for a range of universities all over um I wasn't really looking at location that wasn't a big deciding factor for me so um UE wasn't actually somewhere I, that was on my top five as a matter of fact I think University of Bath <laughs> was my top choice um, and then when I went to an open day at UE that was the um, place I ended up going to so yeah. It is interesting isn't it how people just sort of click with the university when they go and visit so I, I'm really hoping I don't know Petia if you know if Bath are thinking about running open days real open days sort of over the summer at all say August sort of time is that being discussed? Our open days are due to happen in June and as far as I know they're all going to be virtual wow. um, yeah sadly but um, we're hoping to have some on-campus activity um, starting up in the next few months so just to have some visitors come up and go on tours etc but um, hopefully we can do open days again maybe in the autumn um, in person I'm keeping my fingers crossed but yeah for but now even, in the summer. Even a, a tour where you're taken around by a student is incredibly helpful isn't it because um, you can find a lot out about the subject online but I think it's just the visiting the city and so on isn't it? Absolutely. Brilliant so visitors have you any questions for any of us? If you'd like to put your microphones on and speak, that would be great. Or you can just type if you'd rather. But it would be nice to hear from you. Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> I could talk a little bit more about my um, experience um, applying to, with Henley, if that's something that people may be interested in. Oh, I think Kay has a question. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. I yeah. My my question was um, about if if they decided that they wanted to defer a year, possibly. How does the process of that work? Do they say they want to defer on the UCAS application or? Yes. So that. You can go one of two ways, really, or well, one of three ways, actually. So um, you can fill in the application form this autumn as per normal. And there's a little box which says, would you like to start this course in 2022 or 2023, it will say. So you can decide right at the very beginning. Um, or you can say you want to start in 2022, so not have a gap year. And then when it gets a bit further on through year 13, if you decide at that point you want to have a gap year, then you're quite OK to ask the universities if they would mind if you changed your request to start a year later. They don't have to say yes to that, but right. most, most do. You can actually wait and do that on results day. That A lot of people do that. Must drive the universities mad. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. Um, so all of those ways mean that you do the application whilst you're at Henley College in the autumn. The other way is that you don't do your application this autumn and you wait till next autumn and you'll still get support and a reference from Henley College. Right, OK, because because the, the other question was if um, he was if my son was considering a um, apprenticeship, possibly. So I didn't know whether um, he should apply because he's he would still be keen on university, but just keeping the options open. So whether he could apply for university and then in the meantime apply for apprenticeships. Absolutely. I always say 
yes to that. Do try have a university as maybe a backup option and do that application and then move your um, thinking and research over to the world of apprenticeships. So ideally you'd get your university thing in first. Right. And then you would spend the rest of the year from sort of December onwards um, applying for apprenticeships. <laughs> OK. <laughs> yeah, I would say even if you get an offer from a university, you can reject it. So you can say, actually, I don't want to go. So just make the application anyway. OK, so literally that even and on a results day, could you reject an offer? That, that yeah, I, I was um, actually I went through what's called UCAS adjustment. So I my first choice university wasn't the one I ended up going to. Um, I got into it on results day. I got the grades, but then I thought actually I prefer going to Bath, and so I switched to Bath and I rejected my offer from my first choice. So um, it is absolutely you're you're open to do that. Okay, that's, that's great. Thanks ever so much. I think with university applications, anything that you want to do, you probably can. <laughs> so it may not say that on the UCAS website, but it's always, always worth asking. I've been dumbfounded every year, really, by things that students have managed to do. <laughs> I was just going to add to that, actually. Hi, I'm Catherine. I'm head of student services. My son went to Henley College and when he finished his um, BTEC, he wasn't sure what he wanted to do. And he was thinking about an apprenticeship and he didn't do UCAS at the time. And I was really cross with him. But after that, he decided it literally just this January, he did want to go to university and he put in an application via UCAS. Henley College supported him completely and he's got all his offers. So, you know, there is always that flexibility if, if you decide you need it. If you're not 100 percent sure, there is always that um opportunity as well so it's worth remembering that okay thank you no worries yeah and, and i would also add to that um with the support that henley provided there's a lot more flexibility than you may initially think um but it, when it comes to applications i didn't really know what i was doing i was a little bit scared and confused that i'd do the wrong thing and especially if you're also considering a, um apprenticeships with it but henley college for me were fantastic and were really helpful and had answered all my questions. I'm so sorry that's my husband. I'm going to turn my mic off now. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> We've got it recorded now forever so it's got, going to be um, saved for posterity so that's good. <laughs> Daisy would you have you got a question? Hi, um, Daisy's mum here. Um, just, yeah, the question is, is there a limit to how many, so when you're applying, is there a limit to how many uh, courses you can apply for at different universities? I'll let Petty answer that because I'm, I'm tempted to just jump in, so I'll be quiet. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you make your application, you have five choices. Um, so that means you could either apply to five different universities um, for different courses at those universities, or you could even apply to one university five times, like with, with all of your five choices, but for different courses and any kind of mix in between. I would say that if you're going to apply to five, one university for five different courses, it would make writing your personal statement very tricky. Um, but you can have a mix of, let's say you apply to three different universities and for um, for two of them you apply for two different courses or something like that but yeah all in all you have five choices okay that's great and then it, even then you said that it, you then you get your offers and then you choose two do you is that right yeah, then you choose your what's called your firm choice, so your first choice and then your insurance choice. So um, then when you get your results on results day, you automatically that gets sent to your first choice. Um, and if if you're in, you've got the grades, then they automatically accept you and you're going to your firm choice. If you don't meet the grade requirements, then it goes to your insurance. OK, that's great. Thank you. No problem. Anybody else? Um, so this is being recorded, so I will try with Petia to find a way to um, put that somewhere. 
Um, so it will probably go onto the Careers Hub team where students can see it, but we, um, I'll try and get it out through marketing or our website as well um, for other people to see. So I'm sure some people um, didn't quite make it this evening that intended to. So, so we'll see what we can do with that. So watch this space. Um, has anyone got any questions about um, student services support generally at Henley College? Um, or anything else that we might be able to help with before we finish up. You should all have my email address anyway from um, emails I've been sending home recently. Um, so just um, contact me at any part time if you've got queries, that's fine. Brilliant. OK, well, we will let you go now. I'm afraid the sun's gone down where I live, but um, 